Oh, we've got someone in the house. A brave person. Hi. Hi. Hi, how you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. What you got for me? Oh, we've got someone in the house. I'm in the oh, house. Shoot. You have you have an app open that's we're getting reverbed. You have, oh, okay. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Hold on. It's gone now. Okay. You know, that, I All have right. a long moment. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I, uh, I have actually, a gray hair moment. It's just oh, starting. Okay. And it's I just it. starting the gray hair. Looks great. Uh, <laughs> I'm newly single. Uh, okay. six, 64 years old. I okay. live in Whitefish, Montana. Okay. I'm a former search and rescue nurse and hospice okay. nurse. And okay. I'm five foot nine, <laughs> blonde. And um, I can. Okay, find... I just want you to know this isn't a dating app. So no, I don't it's... know. Like, I don't have enough men watching, but we do need to put you on a dating app. Okay. Oh, the problem is no one will approach me. That I was, I'm badass Tarles. And I am the one that uh, I have no problem walking up and uh talking because a lot of you know people are a little nervous but the picking suck or my picker sucks i don't know but i'm really selective and i watch your program and i like some assistance if possible so one of the challenge great question by the way and um you know, the, the what I've observed is that most humans after the age of 50 begin to date with 20-year-old eyes. And what I mean to say is they don't recognize that, the especially for 50, 60, and above, okay? Mm-hmm. The reality is, is as we age, things start to sag, hair starts to disappear, bellies start to form, okay? So, so you know... Um, yeah. Eyes start to go. Sorry. Yeah, pardon me? <laughs> uh, and the eyes start to go. Look at I wear glasses. So, okay. So that's the reality. Mm-hmm. Now, um, and looks fade as we age, right. you know, so there's, you know, there, so understandably, um, it might seem like there's slim pickings. The thing is, there are lots of pickings. You just are doing it most likely with younger eyes. So then the question really begs is, What's most important, the man's looks or his heart? His heart. Okay. Now, let me tell you a quick story. I did the Hoffman process some years ago, and there was uh, 20 men, 19 women. Okay? And really quickly, I want to share with you that um, um, you're not allowed to share what you do for a living until the very second last day. And when I shared with everyone, I'm a dating relationship coach, all the women, the 19 women were surrounding me at the jacuzzi and wanted to talk to me. But why I'm sharing the story is one of the women said to me, Jonathan, when I came here, I scanned the room and there was two men I was interested in, you and this other guy that looked like the Marlboro guy, okay? (laughs) You know, just like that yeah. rugged, you know, kind of cowboy kind of look, even though he didn't have a cowboy hat. And I'm, I'm just saying that that Sam Elliott kind of look, right. you know, that the actor Sam Elliott. And she said to me, she goes, you know, after spending a week with every man here, she goes, I would now date every man. She said, because I got to see their heart. So men tend to be visual creatures. We tend to be more attracted to looks because we need the equipment to get up. Okay. Okay. If the equipment doesn't get up, it's just, it's not going to help in the process. So for us, visual stimulation is important from what I've heard from women while they require that physical stimulation. From what I've heard is men fall in love through their eyes and women tend to fall in love between the ears. So then question becomes, look at, So long as he doesn't have a beer gut the size of Texas and he's missing front teeth, okay? Can you be more open and flexible when it comes to the physical aspects of it? I have no problem with that. As a hospice nurse, I have fallen in love with 80-year-old men that were incredible, and not for their money, because they were incredible men. And um, 
you know, I keep in shape. I do everything and I, I golf and uh, tennis and have a great time. It's just the quality. They either are alcoholics or <laughs> they want to nurse with a purse. Uh, are they where I now, are you getting that in first impression right from a dating app? You're getting that exact impression. Like they literally say, I'm looking for a nurse with a person or yes. I'm an alcoholic. Yes. They literally say I'm an alcoholic a, in their dating I live in app. a town that's under 10,000. I have okay. dated everyone. I don't even go on anymore because I know the inventory. And okay. a couple of them are just, uh, I mean, they are mountain men. They come down <laughs> from the tops of Montana and yeah. trappers and stuff. And I, I'm from San Diego. I am not used to this. I'm like a Dallas housewife wait, wait. on Mars. You know? Wait, you wait, you confuse me. You live in San Diego or you live no. somewhere else? No, I was born and raised San Diego. Okay, got it, got it. Got and it. then okay, moved I just to understand here. that. And so I understand when you live in that type of environment, it might seem like there's slim pickings. That doesn't mean that there isn't one man out of the bunch that might possibly. I just fix. don't want to be too forward. And uh, so what know. is OK? So what does too forward mean to you? I mean, I oh, don't understand. What I don't means. I some I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. You know, if I'm in a bar here in town or something and I see someone and we make eye contact to say hello a lot of gentlemen are just um, scared. And well, I, by the way, if someone said hello to me, I would say hi back. I don't men, men look at the men you're describing aren't afraid of a woman coming up to them. That's bullshit. OK, yeah. I don't buy I don't. You may tell me that's what you're experiencing. I don't buy that. Okay. Yeah. Well, the thing of it now, is, is I have to be honest. They are. Okay. Uh, you know, I. I uh, I know my worth. I just don't want to have sex right away. Even with older men, I have no problem with sex, but I want to get to know someone. I try to follow okay. your rules. I read the books and okay. um, that's all. And a lot of people... Well, you said you want to be honest with me. So what, what, you didn't tell me what it was you wanted to be honest uh, about. No, is that I get approached a lot. It's just, I'm picky. I, I don't, and I wonder if I'm self-sabotaging but um, these guys are different from Maine. I'd have to go to Denver or Seattle or something to find the um, echelon of men that I'm used to dating in LA and San Diego. And I'm not okay. trying to- um, So why do you live I, where you live? My daughter worked up here and I came up and I'm in a metaphysical field and I've been okay. working with a shaman at the Blackfoot Nation. So, okay, well, now I'm you're working with the shaman black. There must be other men who are spiritual that come to these events, right? Yes, um, okay. What about some of those men? The majority of people that come are like during the summer. We have a glacier national park, and okay. it is amazing. And I've worked in there for many years, and it's great, uh, but it is seasonal. Where I live is a recreational, so we have the ski season and we have okay. summer. And after that, so you're telling me the last summer there was absolutely no men worth going out with that are spiritual that came up. I mean, not even to have a date with. The thing of it is, is that we have over like a couple million that uh, come into our town, and it's okay. really crazy. So um, I'm not, you know, just throwing myself out there, but I'm not cutting myself off either i just okay. you know um it's a unique situation and i follow and you really have help by the things that you have said about um, um just be you and just be confident and go in there and so um, i want to go back uh, please forgive me so oh, i want to first off say a you can walk up to any man and say hello. There is not that is not being no. pushy. That's not being forward. That's not being aggressive. That is not chasing. Chasing. Let me just give you an example of what chasing is. Chasing is he's running away and you're chasing him. That's what the word chase means. Okay. Yeah. He's running away and you're going after him. Okay. If you're saying, hey, I'm standing on the 50 yard line. Do you want to meet me at the 50 yard line? That's called effort. Right. Okay. So I just want to be clear, okay? Yes. You can make effort to say hello to someone. In addition, dating apps are the number one place people are meeting today. 
Uh, if there happens to be millions of people coming into town, mo a lot of them are single. They have their dating apps on. I would be swiping and connecting. Oh, okay. what I'm doing too is I became a minister so that I could marry people in the park. And I went okay. to all the concierge at the high end hotels and let okay. them know. So I'm trying to interact and uh, be safe so, because I am single up here. So uh, are the reason why. I, I'm coming back to those men that come into town. Mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming that if you met the right person, you can leave the environment you're in because you, right. you said your daughter was there. Yeah. It's not that she is there. Okay. I, I got away from a divorce of 32 years and I okay. moved up here to kind of start fresh. So, um, you know, the, the thing is I'm trying to say, Leanne, is that, Dating is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> no, it Finding isn't. your life mate is not for the faint of heart. You have to be willing to make Herculean effort. This fantasy we live in that they're just going to knock on our fucking front door <laughs> no. is a fantasy. That they're going to climb to the highest room of the tallest tower is a fantasy. If you I want something, you have to make it happen. I'm in a park. I've search and rescue. I'm hoping I'd pick up a decent guy, you know, or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I do follow your advice and I do try to be the best I can be. And, but at five foot nine, I do o overwhelm certain guys and I realize so that. And I, I want to ask you, what? what's your greatest fear in relationship? Oh, uh, probably that he'd want to get married. So that's a fear. That's your greatest fear. <laughs> yeah. uh, my, my greatest fear probably is um, I don't have any, to be honest. I just want a gentleman I can talk to. Okay, I don't have so any then, fears. Okay. So, okay. So you just want a guy you can talk to. Okay. I have it. Well, listen, um, I, I'm a cancer survivor, pancreatic cancer. And okay. I'm not supposed to be here in a way, but that was 18 years ago. And I'm a survivor. And I used to tell people, I escorted people into heaven and now I live there. And I wonder like, okay, have I already tapped out? <laughs> Is everything I needed so already given? You started this conversation, there's slim pickings, okay? Yeah. So I want you to understand that. That's in your mindset right now. It's slim picking, it's slim picking, it's slim picking. It's Clear slim it out. Picking. Clear that so out. So guess what happens? In, in your visual acuity, yeah. all you see is nothing. Okay, yes, sir. You got because me. you already have a mindset, it's slim picking. So I invite you to switch the narrative. Positive it's raining pack. great men. It's raining great men. It's raining yeah. great men. You're 64 years old. Okay, one of my dear friends and I coached her along the way. She met Alan at age 65. She kept, she did the work I did in my coaching. She kept saying, it's raining great men. It's raining great men. It's raining great men. She met Alan in 2017. They got engaged eight months later. They got married, uh, I think, six months after that. They've been together, let's see, seven years now, okay? Yeah. It's raining great men. Your mindset makes up a big part of this. You're if you keep saying there's no good men where I live, then guess what the universe is going to bring you? No right. good men. But then words you're judging power. men. I need to change my words. Yeah. Now you worked with a shaman, you do metaphysics, you're doing all that. So why not actually do it instead of saying, you know, like here's Leslie. Okay. Reminds everyone it's raining great men. I think I self-sabotage because I maybe sometimes I don't feel worthy. And I okay, wait a minute. Okay, you just told me I have no fears, and now you just well, told I me don't. You're, you're, well, well, that's a fear. I'm not, I'm not worthy is a fear. Well. You know, uh, we can change our mind or be scared just like anybody else, okay. but I still go out. Okay. And, uh, so, but if you don't feel worthy, mm. Maybe. let me just say to you okay. that most human beings, number one fear is, I mean, well, they're, they're tied together. I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable. I'm not likable. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is con in that context of I'm not worthy. I'm not enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, first, having an awareness of this is 80% of it. it. Just being aware of it, okay, is 80%. Okay. Okay. And I invite you to really practice giving yourself a big, gigantic hug. 
Okay. Examine this. Okay. <laughs> examine this. But most importantly, trust within oneself. Reminding yourself that you are enough. This is not easy work to do. This is like peeling an onion. It's yeah. layer upon layer upon layer. I, I shared with everybody on Tuesday, I was feeling tremendous fear and a lack of worthiness over the weekend. I was faced with my shadow. I was faced with the disintegration of my identity, my personality, my reality. I understand this like nobody's business. Yeah. But like anything, like learning how to play an instrument, doing individual work on oneself is a process. And in the meantime, dating and relationships trigger our shit like nobody's business. No shit. It I was scared to death to call shit. you. I was scared huh? to death because I knew you probably would ride my ass, which I needed. And I needed but to I'm call. But I'm not riding your ass. I'm just kidding. No, I think I deserve it. You know, I need to be woken up. And I needed to take that step just to say, get it out there. Get it out. When yeah. you live alone, it's hard to add a girl, add a girl. <laughs> you know, you're okay. It gets tiresome. So you know what? I do. I go for a walk every day. I, I listen to my ayahuasca music. I go for a walk for an hour a day along the beach. I try to get four or five miles in. That's one of the many things I do. I, I choose to socialize and, and commune with people. I choose to be of service like you have. You know, you've been a warrior out there, particularly as an RN and as a hospice nurse being supporting us, you know, through that final transition. You've witnessed a lot of pain. You know what it's like to go to the other side. But now it's time for you. So I invite you to share with me. I'm going to ask you, do you have a pen and paper handy? Sure. Hang on just a second here. Okay. I want you to write this down. Yes, sir. Okay. Go. What do I bring to the table? Okay. What do I bring to the table? What I mean to say is, why am I a catch? Okay. What do I bring to a relationship? Write down, by the way, everyone watching, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to write down all the, re what you bring to a relationship, what makes you a catch, what makes you a prize. Write all this down. I want you to come up with a hundred things. Yeah, Leanne. not just me, people. Come on. Everybody. <laughs> okay. What do Thanks. I bring to the table? What do I bring to a relationship? What can I bring to a relationship? You can ask it. It's like going to a party. You know, like you're going to bring a bottle of wine. What do I bring to the party? And I want that in your vortex. I want you to just marinate on all the things you bring to the table. For example, okay. I bring emotional awareness. I bring a capacity to uh, communicate in a nonviolent way. I show up wanting partnership. I mean, these are just some of the little, some of the things I bring to the table. And I know I said a hundred, there's a lot, but you know, if you don't, if you can't come up with a hundred things you bring into a relationship. Oh, hell yeah. I got more than a hundred. I will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you bring stability, you bring good looks, you bring, you bring sex, you bring, uh, <laughs> you know, oral pleasure. I mean, you know, like there's a lot of things you could put on your list, but I want that in your vortex along with it's raining great men. It's raining great men. It's raining great men. I, it is ra raining great men and I'm a great gal. So they need a Viking and I'm there and uh, they can handle me, you know, but <laughs> well, I, I enjoy this and I will do this exercise. And I think. Okay. All right. Can I reach into the camera and give you a big hug? You sure can. Thank you. Oh, I need thanks it. Leanne for being brave enough. Thank you. And I'm going to take your class. I'm going to call you and get some one-on-one uh, -on -one and really get strong and come back and you're going to see a new gal. Okay. All right. I give <laughs> you an amen. All Thank right. you. Thank Thanks. you so much. I appreciate it. So Leanne just gave us a great kind of example of where she started with a mindset of there's no good men out there. And they're slim pickings. And certainly we can feel that way, particularly in the current dating environment. I can understand that for many people. Okay. But at the same time, as we began peeling the onion of what was going on, 
And as we began probing and asking more questions, we recognized that a lot of what's going on for her is a limiting belief. It's a story. We can change the story, everyone. We can change the story. And I invite everyone to focus on what do they bring to the table and put that in their vortex. Put in your vortex. It's raining great men. It's raining great women for me. Put that in your vortex. What do you bring to a party? Put all that on the table and put your energy there, not from a doormat place, not from a place of being walked on, I don't mean it that way, but what do you bring to a table? And by the way, you're inviting a man to do the same for yourself. What does he bring to the table? And have grown up conversations along the way, like I've been sharing throughout this video and all my videos. Start having grown up conversations with yourself and with the men and women in your life. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know if it is. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And also, if you want to connect with me, there's links below. Schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. Uh, check out the books I recommend. Check out my group. Check out my Instagram, all listed below. All right, folks. I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Merrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love. That's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. I want to thank McCoy, Hill, Anika, everyone who donated tonight, Debbie, True Morris, uh, Badass Tarot, Leanne for being brave, Elizabeth Jameson, Lighthouse, Leslie, uh, Brown Kanita, Little Miss Sharon, Heather, or Healthspan fans, uh, Susan, Julie. Uh, let's keep going here. Everyone, big hugs. Thanks for all the love. Oh, Elena, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Be well. Thanks. Bye now.